I want to talk to you today about the keys to God's prosperity and how to have God's prosperity in your life. And it becomes so easy for us to stray away and it becomes so easy for us to abandon that which we are supposed to do. And my challenge is to put this back in your mind and to get it to that place to committing to it regardless of what the circumstances of your life might be. Now Malachi is a prophet and God sent him to Israel and what is unique is that Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament and God speaks to Israel through Malachi before he is about to shut the heavens down and not talk for 400 years. And there's going to be a 400 years of silence before God speaks again. What does God want to say to a people that he has become so disgruntled and displeased with, so unhappy with as to why he is going to be silent? And why? What is it that he wants to say to them? And I want to suggest that he might want to be saying the same thing to some of us today. So this is going to be his last words before he shuts it all down. And before the 400 years of silence, what is he saying? Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. So you have walked away, God says. You have walked away from my precepts and my ordinances and it is bothering me. He says, and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you says the Lord of hosts. So this is what I love about God. He comes to the nation. He comes to you and I. He gives us another chance. He says, you might have gone astray. You might have forsaken me. You might not do what you're supposed to be doing, but I am now giving you another chance. He's talking to you. He says, and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? That's the great question. And therefore, we're going to look at three points and some sub points for every point as to what should the nation return to? What is it that we need to do? So the first point we're looking at is the problem. And here we see that Israel has a problem. It says, yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. So the sub point, the first sub point of the problem is rebellion. And he says, you and your fathers have not kept the principles. You have not kept my ordinances. And God says, I'm crying out for you to return. I'm asking you to come back. And what is the problem? They said in answer to him, in what way shall we return? How do we get back? How do we return? What's the problem and how do we get back? Because there's a problem they've rebelled. And the way they've rebelled is in, mentioned in verse 8. He says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Now this is the second sub point, is the robbery. And I know that people get tense when we talk about money in church because we want pastor to talk about everything, but, how, uh, but not how we deal with our money. But I come to challenge you and I come to speak the truth to you. And I'm here to testify, to tell you that I've been tithing and an offering, uh, you know, and God has met my every need. So in response to that question, that's what God says. You rob me. I mean, what a question. Will a man rob God? How can you rob God? That's a strange question to ask. But yet, how can a human being, uh, you know, take anything from God? But yet, that's what they did. Because the truth of the matter is, everything belongs to God. And all He asks us to do is give 10%. And some of us, we're struggling with that. He said, give me 10%. That's the tithe. That's a 10%. 10 rand out of every 100 rand. Now, there's a difference between a robber and a thief. When you're a thief, you take it and you don't want it to be discovered that you did it. But a robber comes in seeing and he wants it, but he doesn't care that you see that he did it. And God didn't say you were a thief. He said you're a robber. In other words, he saw you doing it. 
He saw you taking the money that belonged to him and his kingdom and for advancing his program and for reaching the lost for his kingdom, the kingdom of God. And he says you put it in your pocket and that you used it for yourself and he called you a robber. So, you know, a robber also takes it by force and defrauds. A thief takes it secretly, but a robber does it by trying to defraud and put it in his name. And any uh, time you take something from God, it's robbing God. And the third sub point is that there are repercussions. And I know that some of you are going through some hell in your life right now because you've robbed God. But let me tell you this, because right here in the next verse, verse 9, uh, there are the repercussions to you robbing. And he says, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me even this whole nation. He said, everybody's doing it, the whole nation. He says, you are cursed with a curse, you've robbed me, you have put yourself in a detestable position. You have put yourself in an abomination before God, cause you robbing God. He says, you're cursed with a curse, for you've robbed me even this whole nation. Now, this is the problem. Now, I want to talk to you about this today because I want to challenge you to put this in place in your life. I don't care how much money you earn. I don't care what your circumstances might be. I don't care how difficult life might be and treat you. But honor this principle in your life. And I'm a witness to you that over 30 years, I've, not, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seen them begging for bread. Make it a practice in your life. Make it something that you do regardless of the circumstances within your life. Every piece of rand that comes in your hand, honor God and give it to Him with your tithes and your offerings. And you will never hunger and you will never lack. God will always see to it that you will get everything you need. And God will open up doors that nobody can close. So there are the problems. The problem of rebellion, robbery, and there are repercussions to it. But then God comes and point number two is that he gives a prescription. And you know what a prescription is, right? It is something to fix your sickness. It's something to help bring you back and make you whole. And what is the prescription? Well, he gives it and the first thing he gives in verse 10 and he tells you to get your priorities in order. So this is the first sub point of the prescription is your priorities. He says, bring all the ties into the storehouse. Bring it all. Bring the whole 10%. Bring the tithe into the storehouse. He says, there's food in this house. He says that there may be food in the house. Hallelujah. In the house of the Lord. So therefore, I believe that when we as a church, when we as a people of God honor God, and we bring our full tithe, and we continue to do what we've started to do is to help those in need and to give into the community and put back into the community. I believe that God will meet this ministry's every need. And he says, they bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And I want to tell you today, make your tithing your priority. Bring the tithe. Honor it before you pay any other bills. Honor it, you know, before you pay your rent, before you buy your groceries, before you do anything else that you do, make the tithe your priority. And I know somebody is saying, yeah, well, that's in the Old Testament and it was the law. Well, let me tell you something. Tithing started before the law. Abram gave a tithe to Melchizedek. And that happened before the law. Tithing got instituted and modeled for us before the law. And when I look through the scripture, Jacob tithed, Levi tithed, Hezekiah tithed, Nehemiah tithed, Jesus tithed. And if it was good enough for them, it's good enough for me. But hold up, in the New Testament, even the hypocrites tithe. So if you aren't tithing, then you haven't even risen to the level of a hypocrite. You are less than a hypocrite. That's a bad posture to be at, less than a hypocrite. It was good enough for Jesus. It's good enough for you. It's good enough for me. And I want to challenge you today to bring it all. So this is the prescription. Get your priorities right, number one. Then number two in the prescription is the place. And this is a very important point here. It is the place that you bring it. And he said, bring it into 
the storehouse because I've met a lot of people who think that uh, they can take their tithe and divide it up and they send a piece here and a piece there and a piece to the cousin and a piece to the uncle and they divide it up no 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 the tithe belongs to God and it belongs in the storehouse of God so where's the storehouse the storehouse is a place where you are fed, where you are ministered to, where you are serving. So God is telling us, bring it there, that there might be food in God's house. Uh, by the way, he says, bring the tithes and the offerings. And you know, some of us, and I know, it's, I, don't, I know we don't have that in our congregation, but many times you get people that they've got such a problem with tithing that they tithe right to the saint. You mean you, you can't even trust God enough that you can just round it up to the next number? Are you that tight that you can't even just round up your tithe and you pay it right to the seat with all the doors that God has opened to you and all the miracles He's done for you? Can't you just even round it up to the next number, right? So the next point, let's, let me close off with a final point because there's a promise. So first of all, we had the problem, we had the prescription, now we have the promise. And here's the promise. When he talks here in Malachi 3, he includes it with a promise. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. In other words, the Lord of the heavens' armies. He says, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So when you honor God, you make this a priority and do it as a practice in your life to put him to the test, to put him and try him and test him. He said, then let me show you how awesome I am. Let you show how amazing I am. Let me prove to you that I am a mighty God. And then he says, watch me perform. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. God says, I'm going to cause for stuff that would break down to not break down. He says, when the devil would try to steal your joy and make stuff not work no more, he says, I'm telling you, I am going to intervene for you, me with my, my heavenly armies. And I'm telling you, in my life, I've tithed. And I've seen the hand of God upon my life, His provision, His protection. We've always had food on our table. We've always had a roof over our head. We had money for school fees. We had provision in times of emergencies. And the one time I did not tithe, you know what happened? They broke into our house. They stole all our expensive equipment. That was many, many years ago. And the moment I repented, and gave my tithe because that was exactly God showed me. This is what happened. And the moment I repented and tithed, you know what happened? I was restored to even better, restored back even better than that which I lost. So I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I just want you to know that God will rebuke the devourer and he's going to protect your stuff. He's going to cause you to prosper. And he says your vine will bear fruit. I will cause that whatever you put your hand to, I'm going to cause you to prosper, right? So I'm going to illustrate this for you, what it looks like. I got 10 apples. And God says, you earn 10 apples, you made 10 apples. Here's what the tithe looked like. Take one out, just one, and now you give me that one, set it aside, and God says, you get to keep the other nine. Got 10 oranges, God says, just take one, 10%. Give me one, and you get to keep the other 90, right? So when you do it God's way, you've got to manage the other 90%. So I've got some... 10 uh, potatoes here and God says, you know, give me one, 10%. You get to keep the nine. You keep the rest. Now, if you're not tithing, guess what you're doing? You're going over to God's table and you're saying, I don't trust you to take care of me. And you're saying, I need this over here. And you are bringing it over to your table. But what God's trying to tell you, that if you do this, if you take the one 
and you put it on God's table. You gave the 10% and you give it to God. He says, I will protect the 90% that you still have. He'll put his hands around you. He will multiply it, right? So you being greedy, you know, not, not giving to God his 10% and you're inviting a curse on you so that God is not able to protect the rest of what you have. You're inviting God to bring judgment on you when you don't give him the 10%. Now you can listen to all the other people in the world who are telling you that tithing is not for today. But I'm telling you, it works. After more than 30 years, it works. As a matter of fact, I want to suggest to you that it's not just your tithes. But our God is so good that we want to give him some offerings as well. And I'm so far... Uh, beyond giving God just my 10%. I'm past that level. And I want to challenge you today to do likewise. Go and honor God with your tithes, but honor Him also with offerings. And I want to challenge you. Those of you who are not tithing, I'm challenging you to make it a practice and a priority in your life. Because there are some of you at your churches where you are worshiping, right? You have the capacity, you have the ability to tithe and give a substantial offering that will help your church to carry out the mission that God gave the church to carry out. And therefore, I want to challenge you today to sow into the kingdom of God and watch Him open up the windows of heaven and bless you in a way that you will not have room enough to receive. Hallelujah. But you know where this starts off? It starts off with a heart of repentance because it's an element of faith. Do you trust God? And just where you are, pray this prayer with me. If you're the one that says, you know, Pastor, I'm going to start tithing and I'm going to be faithful to God. Uh, I don't want to be part of the problem, right? I don't want to be the rebel. Uh, I don't want to have this repercussions in my life and, and be the one causing the robbery. I want to take the prescription today and I want to start giving and I want to be part of the solution and I want to see how God's in and through me bless His kingdom, that His kingdom can advance and I know God well then, as I seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, I know God will give me everything that I need. If that is you today, just pray the following prayer with me and say with me, Father, forgive us for robbing you. Forgive us for not trusting you. Forgive us for being fearful and holding on, taking that which is yours. But Lord, we make a commitment today that we will be faithful and obedient to your word. Because we trust you, Lord. We trust you with our lives. We trust you with our future. We thank you, Lord, that our lives are in your hands. And looking forward, Lord, to being blessed, to be able to give more, to sow more, to help more. And therefore, Lord, we repent and make a decision today to be faithful to your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. And I want to encourage you at the church where you are being ministered at, give, give to the Lord and it will come back to you. Give with a heart of joy and write it down and put it out there and say, Lord, this is my written down plan of giving to you. And as I'm going to give this to you, Lord, I know you're also going to do miracles within my life. Amen. God bless you.